Have you ever thought about becoming a tattoo artist? Well, finding a quality apprenticeship can kind of be a nightmare sometimes. So maybe you've considered a tattoo school. Well, if you live in Oregon, you don't have much of a choice. You're going to have to go to one of these tattoo schools. And, well, it's not always what it's cracked up to be. Stick around. I'm going to break it down. Hello, hello, welcome to the show. This is Hack Hunter, where we review some of the best and worst tattoo artists that are in your cities. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard the phrase, those who can't do, teach. Well, therein lies the problem with most of these tattoo schools. Today, we're going to be reviewing the work of Falcon. He is down there at Angel Ink Tattoo there in Oregon City. And as you can see from their website, it says he's a tattoo artist there and he's one of their instructors. And uh, if you want to check him out on Instagram, birdseye underscore tattoo, do your own research, guys. Always do your own research. But let me show you what I found. Boom. I'm going to start with this one because what? That is a weird, strange looking face on a lion. The eyes, the perspective is definitely off on him. It's strange that there's no shading in the eyes here. So they're just really flat and two dimensional and bug eyed looking. But as an instructor, I'm going to judge his work very meticulously because if he is training many, many apprentices, pumping them out and helping them start their career, I want to make sure that his fundamentals are at least down pat. Uh, maybe he can't draw a lion's face for shit, but uh, let's see if his line work is at least good. Nope, <laughs> look at how terrible this line work is. The point's connecting weird, it's all sort of wiggly, doesn't connect in some places and, and connects in other places where it's not supposed to. Just this looks very, very haphazard work. This sort of uh, line dot shading, the stippling shading that he was doing here, it's really not that consistent. It has a really kind of streaky look to it and I don't think that's intentional. I think that's just kind of rushed quick work from somebody who maybe was not properly trained in how to do this kind of shading. But overall, it's just kind of lazy, quick, cheap work in my opinion. Uh, especially this white here, look at this tiny little dab white there, there. I'm going to zoom out. Those little dabs of white don't mean anything. Those are not going to heal and hold up. They're not going to stand out when the tattoo's uh, finished healing. So kind of pointless to do them, to be honest. But uh, let's move on. Let's see what else he's got. Here's a cover up. Somebody wanted to cover up this awesome tattoo. I don't know why, <laughs> but he went with this kind of old school looking scenery piece. Uh, this is definitely looking like it's from some 90s flash art. Uh, but if I zoom in, look how strange of a job he did on these teeth. Weird shading around the outside and then fill the inside solid with white. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but that does not look like a 3D round tooth to me. And then again, the shading in here does not come up to the, the edge of the line. This would have been better just blacked out. It's the inside shadow of the mouth, just black it out. Uh, also with his line work, really weird that he would outline places like the outer edge of the nose here. Why would you outline those? That makes it look a lot less realistic. Um, and then these tiny little dots that he put in that moon. Can you guys see that? What is up with that? Why would you just put these tiny little dots in here? They're not going to hold up and look nice in the end when it heals. Those aren't even going to be visible from a distance. Look at that. See, you're not going to be able to tell that those white dots are there. They don't add much to it. There's no real artistic reason for putting them in there. So I don't know. I see a lot of ch strange choices, a lot of quick, simple work. This one, another animal where the side of the face is just gapped and missing here. Maybe there should be another flower there, or maybe you'd be able to see the side of the face. But uh, yeah, that looks strange. Then if we zoom in right here, look at these whiskers. Every single one of these is blown out. And for those clients that don't know what I mean, that means he is digging in too deep. And uh, I understand why. What happened here is he wanted to slow down and make sure he got those whiskers smooth. And when he slowed down, uh, he slowed down his speed, but it was chopping up the skin, chewing up the skin, maybe going a little bit deeper too because he was trying to keep a steady hand. But uh, yeah, that's all just blown out. Same with these leaves here. You can see this haze of gray between these two sets of leaves. And that's all blow out, blur out from uh, the ink going under the skin in areas it's not supposed to be. And uh, yeah, here, the leaf doesn't even connect to that point. The stem doesn't even connect to those petals. Just a lot of stuff I'm seeing. Oh my gosh, look how bad that blowout is right there. Man, a lot of stuff I'm seeing that I would definitely not recommend uh, him being an instructor at all. Here's one where some pretty obvious mistake here. You guys have heard me talk about this in the past. A lot of artists do this where they just blast white over top of their shading at the very end. This is a very lazy way of doing white or doing whiskers in general. And you can see that. It's just not going to hold up well. There's a clear gap in these whiskers because he tried to go over his gray shading, but the white is just not going to overpower your gray or your black. It's not how it works. Just because you're putting it on top of it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to overpower it. Um, so yeah, that's going to heal very, very faint, probably non-existent by the time it's fully done healing. Not really impressed with a lot of this work. The line work especially does not look like a trained veteran that's been doing it a long time, especially when I'm seeing things like this where it goes really bold right here to really thin there, or it just doesn't connect in places where it should be connecting. These are really obvious red flags to me, somebody I wouldn't recommend getting a tattoo by, let alone being your instructor that you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars uh, to teach you. Uh, here's another cover up, and man, he did this, well, I was going to say koi fish, but that's, that looks a lot more like a... Uh, 
never mind. Never mind what it looks like. <laughs> but it just definitely doesn't look like a koi fish, does it? And I'm really not a fan of what he did here. This is gray wash shading he did on the head here. It looks a little red and irritated, so some of you clients might have thought that that's color in there. But that's gray wash that he shaded the head and these, uh, we'll call them fins. But then the rest of it's colored. That's a really strange way to mix gray shading and coloring. Why would the whole thing be in color, but then you gray wash the top of the head? So this just seems like an artist who maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe just does not have those fundamentals down, was not really fully trained on how to compile designs and what choices to make. And it kind of scares me to think that he's teaching the next generation. Uh, now they have a lot of instructors there and it says on their website what you can expect. Uh, needle bars, they're gonna spend about 20 hours learning that, 20 hours on tattoo machines and equipment and supplies, 20 hours, safety and sanitation, 40 hours. That's good, that's very important. But a major part of a tattoo artist's job is the design, the art, the placement, all that. And they spend the least amount of time in that uh, 15 weeks. You're only spending 10 hours on learning that. How to design things, how to compile things, what looks best on the body, uh, what compositions to use, light sources to use. And they're spending the least amount of time on that. And down here you can see their cost. Their tuition is $10,000 plus all the other stuff, $12,000. And they're going to pump it out in uh, just 15 weeks. And that scares me. That really scares me because some of these things, you guys, you got to learn from uh, somebody that knows what they're doing, but you got to spend a lot of time familiarizing yourself with it. Yes, your instructor can tell you what to do, tell you what works best, but it's going to take you time to learn it. It's going to take you time to practice it and master it. And so if you ask me, after three or four months, you're just not going to have mastered all those things. Because I want you to imagine how long it takes just to learn one part of the body. For example, a hip here. If, if you only do one hip tattoo a month, how long is it going to take you before you feel like you've mastered tattooing this part of the body? Now imagine that with feet, hands, necks, backs, arms, all those things require practice. They require you to tattoo differently and adjust your techniques. And so I do not like the three month course and then you're done. Send you off into the world to, to start charging full price. And again, uh, here's something where I'm just seeing blown out lines, blotchy lines in his work. And surprise, surprise, they don't spend a lot of time on tattoo design, art, and placement because look, a lot of the stuff I found in most of their artist portfolios was just copied offline kind of stuff. And so it doesn't surprise me that that's what I'm finding in his portfolio. Uh, he just does not have that feel of a, a custom artist that spends a lot of time on the artwork. This looks like really just kind of cheap imitations of someone else's good artwork. Now, uh, obviously this one is pretty clear. I think Falcon's going on our hack list. I don't think I would recommend getting tattooed by him, let alone having him be your teacher. If you're spending a lot of time and money, uh, definitely gotta take your time choosing your teacher, you guys. Now, before we go, I gotta talk about the owner there. Shauna Holder is the owner, and some of the work I found in her portfolio, ooh, EGADS, was not that great either. A lot of the same mistakes. Look at this line work, got overworked and did not heal well. This white in the whiskers, she's trying to blast it over top of her color at the very end so a lot of those similar issues look at the line work just really kind of uneven and dodgy and uh, again I found this in her portfolio and this is a piece that I've seen clients bring me before so I recognize right away you could find this online by just googling octopus outline and you're gonna find that one right off the bat so guys I would recommend if you're gonna find uh, an artist to teach you be very careful and uh, you want to find an artist that's uh, a custom artist that actually does their own custom creative design work and I think that's usually the best way because you're gonna find they're gonna be a lot more of a dedicated committed artist and they're gonna have a lot more passion for not only their job but their passion for the future of the tattoo industry so that's it that's my two cents if you guys want to check them out angel.ink.tattoo and uh, yeah you can do your own research but uh, stick around we're gonna find another school out there in Oregon City that I think we can recommend to you guys. All right, we'll see you in part number two. Okay, bye-bye.